So let's move on and start building the system proper. So we'll create a tools subdirectory in the same way as we do for Linux from scratch and we create a sim link to it. But we also have a cross tools directory as well with a sim link. As I say, this is an extra stage where we've got to create these cross tools for the target architecture to allow us to build the temporary Linux from scratch and the final Linux from scratch system. So now we're going to add a CLFS user that we can do these first two stages with. And we'll give this a password. Change the ownership of these two temporary tool directories. And the same with the sources as well. And then we'll become the CLFS user. Again, a lot of this, if you've done Linux from scratch, you'll see is quite a lot similar. Now this bit is slightly different. We've got to here define what the host machine is and what the target machine is. And this is probably the crux of um, how the start of our cross compiling works. So this bit here is going to um, get the um, machine type from the kernel basically. I think it's the same output as you name minus M but it creates what they call this triplet which is the machine, the system and the distribution I think it is. Um, you can read about this on the internet what this means. Um, so if we did echo and the output of this command you'll see it, it takes this oops, it takes this um, architecture designation and embeds it with other information and that becomes our triplet for the host machine. This is the machine that we're running now and it exports that to the CLFS host variable. And the next bit we define is the CLFS target. So this is the bit we say right the target we're going to be cross compiling for is this. And as you can see for our 32-bit system that we're targeting, we've got four options. We can't do 386s anymore because not only is it not supported by GLibc, it's not supported by the kernel anymore. Um, I believe GCC still com can compile on 386 or, and 4 or 386. Um, don't quote me on that, I haven't tested it, but I've, I've not seen anything that says you can't do that at the moment, but definitely Linux kernel and glibc you can't since you know, maybe a few years ago uh, so we're compiling for a 486 so we'll be taking this triplet if you are to compile for an original Pentium or an AMD K6 or compatible like a Cyrix you would choose that triplet and as you can see for any other Pentium so that would include Pentium Pro onwards um, it doesn't actually say that there should also say Pentium Pro in that, that box there or any of the newer uh, AMD Athlons or Durons you choose the i686 triplet but say so we're building for an i486 so we'll choose that triplet make sure when you copy that that you haven't got any spaces either side of it so it should be quote then the triplet and then the quote without any spaces at all so export that so we've now got the host triplet and the target triplet and we can actually just double check them by echoing them so there's the host one and the target one so we, we're building on this machine architecture and we're going to be making the binaries compatible with this architecture Oh, uh, I missed a bit there. Yes, I did. I thought so. Uh, 
need to run this bit in here to what this does is adds these variables to the um, startup uh, configuration file so that if we leave the CLFS user, say if we reboot or whatever or go back to the root, um, that these environment variables are actually um, reset again. So if I was to log out of the CLFS user, you see that um, they don't exist now because we're the root, there's only that one. But if we become the CLFS again, and I'll re do that command, you see that it, oh sorry, the host and the target command, you see they've been effectively remembered because they've been added to the startup configuration file. Um, actually, one other change I will make to this bash rc file um, is I'm going to put some color into the prompt here just so I can pick it out. It's easier if there's a screen full of um, text. It's easy to pick out where the, uh, the prompt is if you're looking for the beginning of a, a listing or something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the current one and um, add it into the startup. Um, oops. So to do that, I need to put in some uh, codes to set the colors. So I'm going to use green here because we're just an ordinary user. But later on, I'll be doing the same, but I'll be choosing red because we'll be root. Uh, oh, okay. So this code turns off the colors, so it just resets them back to the white on black. Hopefully that's correct. So I'm just going to resource that. Yeah, let's change it. And you see if I type now that it's just black and white. Another thing I'm going to do is just change the colors on this terminal because it's slightly gray and the contrast is not quite good. So I'm going to change that and get rid of the transparency. Better. Right, it's better. It's a lot, lot blacker the background. Okay, so yeah, well, now we can move on.